C3 Cottonwood. We welcome you to church this morning. I'm Pastor Kathleen. And I'm Pastor Frank. And yes, we are excited that you're with us again this morning. It's going to be a great, great morning. We have a special message for you this morning. I believe you'll be uplifted. You'll be encouraged. You'll be inspired. You'll be motivated. But above all, I think you're going to be challenged and strengthened. So it's going to be a great, great day. So we just in, in, invite you this morning. Have a great time at home with a cup of coffee in your pajamas whatever we just want to be part of what we're doing here i know there's a distance between you and us but you know in the spirit there's no distance with god god is here and god is with you so again we thank you for being here with us it's going to be a great great morning and we want you to know that this message this morning is going to be inspiring it's going to be empowering and it's going to uplift and strengthen your faith today with hope love and faith so get ready for a great morning, but let's go ahead and just, where you are, would you just please stand? Let's still honor God, even though we're not together, but let's, uh, let's honor God uh, in this, with His presence in your house. So would you stand where, where you are, if you can, and join me in prayer as we open up today's service. Father God, we thank you this morning for the incredible God that you are. A God that has so much love for each and every one of us. A God that cares for us. A God that loves us. And so, Father, we thank you for who you are and for what you're doing. And I pray that your anointing would be upon this service here in this house as well as the homes wherever people are watching from. So let your will be done. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Buckle up and hold on. At our church, we love God. Make no mistake about that. At our church, we believe in God's radical, unconditional, and unwavering love for us. At our church, we believe that Jesus is God. We also affirm that you may or may not believe that Jesus is God. And we're not asking you to change your belief system before you attend our church. We're simply inviting you on a journey toward Jesus. For years, churches have placed a high priority on Jesus as the get out of hell free card. At our church, we place the highest priority on Jesus as a live life to the fullest invitation. At our church, we believe every person has a dream deep inside their hearts and that God put that dream there, not for our glory, but for His. At our church, we're not concerned with where you've been, but where you're going. At our church, we believe that the Bible is God's Word. It is real, it is living, it is active. We believe that people who don't go to church anywhere are not the enemy. They are real people who need the perfect love that only God can give. And we believe that God gives this love through, of all people, us. At our church, we do not and we will not display a holier-than-thou attitude toward anyone. We are all broken people, but He is putting us back together. And finally, and most importantly, at our church, we believe that Jesus really lived, that he really died on a cross, and that he really rose again on the third day. And we cannot and we will not candy coat or water down that message, ever. Today, you've chosen to sit yourself in the middle of a very safe place to hear a potentially dangerous message. Welcome to our church. Wow. 
can't get enough No, I can't get enough Of your amazing love No, I can't get enough And I can't walk
Church, it's time for generosity. And let me begin by reading to you a scripture that we've talked about before, we've read before, we quoted it before. But let me read this to you, and let me just make a few comments about our tithing and our offering. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, from the NIV rendition, it says this, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Let me just say this when it comes to tithing. There's so many thoughts out there in terms of tithing and an offering. And let me just give you this one perspective from this verse that we just read. Number one, when we're talking about tithing, we're talking about a spiritual discussion, not a financial one. Because notice what he says, what you have decided in your heart. So it is a heart issue. It's a spiritual issue. And as soon as you and I understand this, then we're able to connect with God in such a way that when we give out of obedience, it allows then God to move in our life. We don't give to get. We give because of obedience. We give because of the relationship we have with the Father. So this morning, as we uh, take up our tithes and our offerings, please understand it is a spiritual issue. So tithing to me, it speaks of my obedience to my God. And when I tithe, it becomes an attitude in my life. And I just thank Him for who He is because when I have this attitude of generosity, it's a heart issue. And when I begin to walk in that, it opens up the windows of heaven, the Bible says. And He then starts to pour out a blessing upon our lives. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready for a blessing, an overwhelming blessing in my life. But it begins with uh, obedience on our part. It's a spiritual issue. So this morning, uh, as you give, you can either text to give and you'll have the information there on the screen. You can also go to Tithely and you can give uh, that way or go to our church website. There you can also give via Tithely on our church website or you can just mail it in or bring it to the office. We're open uh, Monday through Thursday. We have someone here that if you want to just bring your tithe the old-fashioned way, by all means, we'll be here to, uh, to take your tithe and to thank you. We do miss you. We thank you for your obedience to the Word of God in the last couple of weeks. You guys have been great, and I just ask you to continue so that we can just partner together, engage in what God is asking us to do so we can change and turn this community of ours upside down for God. Can someone say amen? So again, thank you for giving, and I just bless you, and I give you all, uh, I give the, the Lord all glory for what He's doing in your life. And get ready, because God's about to begin an overflowing experience in your life. God bless you. Now let's get ready for the message. Good morning, C3 Cottonwood. We're so excited to come into your homes and just have a message for you that I feel is going to be inspiring, it's going to be uplifting, but it's going to strengthen your faith today. I have a message for you that I want to share, but I'm going to bottom line it because not only am I going to give you this message, we also are going to have a, like a, an interview with Pastors Juan and Evie. They have something very exciting to share with you that they've actually experienced in their their own home. So come and join and sit around your TV or your Facebook or whatever platform you're using to watch us and, uh, and just listen to what maybe God would be speaking to you in your faith. 
This morning, I want to talk to you about being pulled. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, do you remember my husband taught on fighting the good fight of faith? He said the first thing is that we are to fight through with prayer. My heart always goes back to prayer because we've been praying a long time, been praying for many things, and I believe God is shifting some things in my thinking about prayer. And so I said, God, what is it that you want to break through from what we're in right now? I see and I hear so many people are exhausted. Mothers are exhausted and frustrated. There's people that are wanting to protect themselves and they're doing everything they can to do what they need to do. We see the economy being totally shut down. But what is God saying for us at this moment? And what opportunities is he giving us to be able to go forward? So I want to share what the Lord spoke to me. He said, I, did, I know in my heart I didn't want to come from a point of my soul where I'm so used to praying certain things in my soul and my thinking that this is how we've always done it. I said, Lord, in my heart right now, I want to know what it is that you and or and how you want me to pray. And this came up, this statement came up out of me. And I know when a statement comes up out of me, it's not me and what I'm thinking, it's him speaking to me. But this statement says, help me not to get pulled into, into what I see, but help me to get be pulled to what you say. And I said, oh God, let that be so with me right now. And he says, how, and I said, in my heart, I feel like I'm in a tug of war. How many of you feel that you're in a tug of war right now? Are you being pulled to look at what you see and so fear comes up or the pressures or you're so tired of staying home and stuck with the kids? Or are you being pulled to what God says? Maybe, and I want to encourage you, God has a word just for you in your situation that he wants to fulfill for you. But what I want to take time to explain right now is that it's time for us to consider and be wise. These are profound lessons of God's great wisdom and his love and mercy that I think he's ready to pour out on us in unways that we've, unprecedented ways that we've never known before. But we have to get our faith aligned with him. We've got to trust his word. And so it's a time where we are going to begin to cry out for help with love and mercy. And that's going to create an atmosphere of miracles that are going to take place. Phil Pringle taught us in our last class, in our identity class, that God is in our past, he's present, but he's also future. And that when he's future, he's actually over here. And when we begin to believe his word, confess his word and prophesy his word, he, that takes him in the future and he begins to fulfill it right now in the present. So I want to encourage you now, maybe you've never done this before in your prayer, maybe you've never known even what it meant, but I call and I'm calling to you, prophesy. Prophesy into your future the word of God in your prayers so that God can begin to fulfill his word in your situation today. Right now, in your home, in your circumstances, what are we looking at? What does God say about our situations? For example, the virus. Do we get in fear and listen constantly to what they're saying? Or do we get a word from God and what he's saying about the situation? And some of you may be hearing from the Lord, do this, do that. Do what God's telling you to do. And as we process this together as a family, we need to honor the government. We need to honor what God is saying, but we don't need to get in fear. But how about healing in your body? How about financial breakthrough? We all need to hear a word from God for ourselves. In communion, we've been encouraging everybody to take communion every day, if you can, with whatever you have. Because it, when we partake and we remember Jesus Christ, we partake of his body and his provision. We also partake of his blood that cleanses us, that redeems us, that restores us. There was a moment uh, when we went back to Nashville, we, an, a great friend of ours, Andy Rampula, had gone to Israel in February. And uh, while he was over there, I think the pressure of just 
being up in the plane for that long period of time, he started having bleeding behind his eyes and he was starting to see fuzzy and he comes back home and they're telling him what's wrong with his eyes. Well, I saw on, on a story of his that he began to take communion for the last three weeks and in that communion, God began to reveal to him that every time he took and partook took of the bread, that he was actually supernatural things were beginning to happen within his body because of what God and the blood does through that word and through that promise. And he said that God began to say, I'm healing you right now. And when he went back to the doctor, he said that the doctor says, I don't know what you're doing, but your vision was should be 2020 and it was 2200 that's how bad it was but he says now that you've come back three weeks later he says your vision is now 2070 that's how much it improved and I know that God gets the glory in that because he was bringing revelation of how powerful communion is I want to encourage you take communion another thing is that we need to be listening to what God is saying about every situation. What is God saying? What is the word that he's saying just for you? In Psalms 107, it says that it's actually, the whole psalm is actually called, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Who is the redeemed? We are. So we get to say so what God is saying to us because we begin to cry out to a God that cares for us, that brings deliverance, that brings healing, that brings a hope for our future, a hope for our circumstances, and it's to prosper us. It's to help us to flourish. So take this time and begin to say, God, I want to hear a word from you for my situation. In Psalms 107, 19, it says, They cried out to the Lord in their trouble. He saved them from their distresses. He sent his word and he healed them. All of a sudden, that became alive to me. He sent his word and he healed them. So, Father God, right now, I pray right now for all of us that your word, as we believe it, we're going to put it close to our heart. You send your word and you heal us. Whether it's physical, whether it's a marriage, whether it's children, whether it's finances, you send your word and you're healing us. In their trouble, you delivered us from all the destructions. So I want to just encourage you, let's give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness and for his wonders. And let us also offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of his works of joyful singing. So Psalms 107 is that he sent his word. What is the word that he's sending you? Listen. Are you going to look at what your circumstances say or are you going to listen to what God is saying to you? By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. What is God saying to you? Father God, give us a word and you are healing us at this moment and at this time. In Isaiah 25, 24 and 5, the word of the Lord came to him. In Matthew 8.8, 8, if you only speak the word, my servant will be healed. If there's something about the word of God, if we'll believe the word, if we'll declare the word, if we'll prophesy the word, he says he will heal us. There, the word of God I'm challenging you with is begin to prophesy into your circumstances, into your future, so that God who is in the future can begin to fulfill that promise in your circumstances right Right now and you know what when he heal when the word heals them then the deliverance came so I just want to you guys to begin to say Lord I want a word from you show me your word help us to stand on your word that that for example God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory we've been praying Ephesians chapter 3 that God would unveil his riches and glory in each and every one of you we're prophesying that we're declaring that so that it can be a fulfillment from the future into our present right now in Luke chapter 1 and this is where I want to kind of begin a story is that it's about Zachariah and Elizabeth and 
an angel of the Lord came to Zechariah and to Mary, but I don't want to focus on Mary and Jesus. I want to focus on this particular one because there's something special about Zacharias that when this angel came to him and began to tell him what his son, he says, we're going to answer your prayers that you are, you've been praying for for many, many years of having a baby. And this angel tells Zacharias that, or Zachariah that you are going to have a baby. And, that it, and this is what this baby is going to be for. And he tells him all the things that will begin to, uh, well, I, I'm going to actually read it because I don't want to rob you from it. It says, the angel of the Lord appeared to Zechariah. He was overwhelmed with fear. The angel reassured him, don't be afraid. God is showing a grace to you. Well, let me tell you right now, how many of you, if you saw a huge angel standing to you and prophesying to you and tell, giving you a word, how many of you would get afraid? I don't know what I would do because I haven't ever seen an angel come speak to me personally like that. But let me tell you, I think you would probably be shaking in your boots, wondering, God, what are you doing? You think he would believe God at that point, giving him this promise of what he's about to say. But let me tell you what he does. The angel reassured him, don't be afraid. God is showing a grace to you. I am coming to tell you that your prayer for a child has been answered. You will bear a son. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even while in his mother's room. He will persuade many to turn back to the Lord God. He will go before the Lord as a forerunner with the same power and anointing as Elijah the prophet. He will be instrumental in turning the hearts of the fathers and tenderness back to their children and the hearts of the disobedient back to the wisdom of their righteous fathers. And he will prepare and unite a people who are ready for the Lord's appearing. Well, his response was, yeah, right, I don't believe you. And so he says, because you don't believe me, I'm going to make your mouth be shut up until your baby is born. So now we go forward. She goes through the pregnancy. She, the baby's born. And she ends up calling him John. And, he, and they all come to him. No, don't call him John. You need to call him what the family lineage is. And he turned to them and he says, no, we're going to call him John. As soon as he said that, his voice was released. I want to share with you right now, God wants you to be filled with the Holy Spirit and he doesn't want you to be barren and he doesn't want his empty words to be not going forth. He doesn't want you to be empty with words. God wants you to be filled full of the Holy Spirit. He wants you prophesying and he wants you speaking into the future because it wants to be filled so that God can begin to fulfill what his word is saying to you. In Luke 137, because for God... Nothing is ever impossible, and no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. Right there, this is what God is wanting to do for you and for me right now. For nothing is ever impossible, and no word from God shall be without prayer, power or impossible of fulfillment. So listen for a word from God's word for your children, for your finances. Declare and prophesy into the future. And God will make it alive and fulfill it. Just speak the word. Just believe and have faith in God's words. Speak it. For his word comes and he heals them. This is the promise to you right now. Is that if we'll believe the word, if we'll receive the word and declare the word over ourselves, over our bodies, over our minds, over our marriages, over our children, God says, I will send you a word and I will heal them. And he will deliver us out of all this destruction. Get ready because God is about to do some incredible, amazing things. Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and he prophesied. When his mouth was released and he stopped being barren, he began to prophesy. He said, Blessed praise and exalted thanks be to the God of Israel, for he has seen through the eyes and the grace, and he comes as a deliverer to set us free. Okay, I lost my place. Hang in there. He appears to us as a mighty Savior. But I want to emphasize, but the trumpet of redemption is coming from the house of David.
It's time to look up and see what God says about our mighty Savior. Speak the word about our deliverance and be not pulled into what you see. Let's prophesy into the future so God can fulfill it. It's going to take our faith. We've been, pre we've been preaching and teaching and strengthening your faith. So it's going to take your faith. It's going to be amazing. Jesus wants to be our Savior. He wants to be our Deliverer. He wants to reveal himself to us and through the eyes of grace. So which way are you going to let yourself be pulled? To what you see or to what God says? So I want to remember, remind you today as I close this up in Ephesians chapter 3. We are praying. We are prophesying over this house. We are praying and we're prophesying e over each one of your families. We are praying and declaring for this year. And let me pray it and declare it over you right now. Paul's prayer for love is to overflow us. Remember that we kneel humbly in awe before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah, the perfect Father of every father and child in heaven and earth. And I pray... And I proclaim and I declare, I prophesy that he would unveil within you unlimited riches of his glory and his favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power in the name of Jesus. Get a word from God. It's time. It's time for you to believe his word. It's time for you to receive his word because he says, my word will heal you. My word will empower you. I'm excited to have Pastor Swan and Evie share a story that happened to them on May the 30th. March. Oh, March the 30th. <laughs> Okay, I'm prophesying ahead of time, though. <laughs> so anyway, um, I would like to first have Pastor Evie share her heart and what happened to her on March the 30th. But um, I'm excited. So can you tell us what you experienced sure. on that day? Well, I was on the phone with Pastor, um, and we were texting back and forth. But, but first of all, I'm jumping ahead. Um, we had just got down with staff meeting. So I just started praying in the kitchen about the house and everything and finances and, and just going through a whole bunch of questions and different things that I was talking to the Lord about. All of a sudden, um, and I wrote it down, today I heard a sound of a trumpet, not once, but twice. It did shake me. It was, you know, and I wasn't sure at first what to do with it. You know, I, I got so overwhelmed the second time, the first time, I, I looked around and I was trying to see if maybe somebody was outside doing, playing a trumpet or something, but it wasn't. So the second time I heard it, I had sent another text to Pastor and I said, it's freaking me out. And I heard it again. At that point, I put the phone down and I felt so overwhelmed and emotional that I ran down the hallway. I opened the door and my husband was taking a nap, but then he wasn't on the bed and I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> so I run in and he's in the bathroom and I go, hun, and he go, what's going on? So I began had to tell him that I heard the trumpet not once or twice. And again, when, uh, when I was feeling that the Lord was saying to me was the year of Jubilee. And the other thing was that he kept saying to me, and I began to prophesy to my husband on what the Lord was saying. And I'm cutting it short. But he said, God, is, God himself said, I, I am doing a new thing. The old is gone. Behold, all things have become new. This is my time, meaning God's time. And then he began to talk about the shofar. And it says, um, of course, it's a ram's horn. A shofar was sounded to usher in the jubilee year in which the land was fallow. Debts were forgiven and slaves were free and able to return home to their families. I'm no longer so cool. a captive. I'm free. That's so cool. And then at that point, as I'm sitting down on the table because I had to write it down. I kept saying to the Lord, he needs to hear it. He needs to hear it because he needs to experience what I experienced. But then the Lord, he, he took me to Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 20 and which was on time because I forgot about it. I wrote it down, which I'm glad I did. 
And this is what it says. When you hear the blast of the trumpet, rush to wherever it is sounding. Then our God would fight for us. That's so cool. So cool. That's and so powerful. And man, that hit me. Because the thing was, I heard it and I was trying to look for it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even put this together that I was running towards it. Right. And I kept looking and I'm like, but where is this thing coming from? It's not coming from inside of me. It's here. It's here. And then when I heard it the second time, that's when it really shook me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had to talk to somebody. And I'm glad that you were one of them because I was in the process of texting that's you. Right. And of course, that's right. so it's real and it happened. Well, towards the evening, he went out and he went to get me a cheeseburger. I wanted a <laughs> cheeseburger with french fries. And so he went and got home, and I was still, like, overwhelmed with what took place. And I kept saying, Lord, he needs to hear it. He needs to experience. So, hon? One of, uh, so, like she said, I went and got a, a cheeseburger for her. Then I, I got home, and I started preparing something for myself because I wanted to eat something different. As I was doing that, all of a sudden, I hear the sound of a trumpet. And it startled me. I turned around and looked at my wife, and she, she said, you heard it, didn't you? Yes. I went, yeah, I heard it. But like my wife said, I didn't hear it outside. I heard it inside. Mm -hmm. And when I heard the sound of the trumpet that quick, the Lord reminded me of a dream that I had. I was actually up on this platform here some years ago, the dream was. And I had a shofar in my mouth. And, and we had some people here, just a little bit of folks, like right in the center of the church. And, and I had the shofar to my mouth, and I began to blow it. And when I blew it, then I began to sing the song, Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. I began to sing that, and uh, the Lord reminded me of that dream, and, and when I sang just that part of the song, I, I woke up. But anyhow, but what the Lord showed me with that, in that respect, again, it's about the Lord is, like just the scripture she just read, the Lord is fighting for us. He's fighting for us, Amen. But he's bringing, he's bringing a freedom and, and, uh, to people's lives and stuff like yes. that right now yes. during this time. And the sounding of the trumpet, I, again, like I said, it, was, it caught me by surprise. My wife was glad that I heard the trumpet also. Yes, I But it, it literally rocked me on the inside because mm -hmm. I didn't hear it outside in the sense outside of our doors. I heard it in the house. So, uh, so that's, that's, my, that's my part of what, of what happened. Can you actually make the sound you showed me and you said this is what it sounded like to me can you share that with them <laughs> come on one <laughs> it's not as close as it should not be as close. but it but it gives us an idea to wrap our brains but around if you it can, and, and be merciful be <laughs> merciful with me all right but, dude, but if you could if you could just uh just for a moment again it's the shofar that i heard being blown that trumpet sound being blown and it was more like That's what I heard. That's but so it was cool. A, but you got, it was nice. More powerful. It was powerful. More powerful than that. Yeah. But that's what I heard. And it was enough. That's all I heard, but it was enough to rock me to the core. You know, so that's what and happened. And I was that's happy so cool. that it rocked him to the yeah. core. Because I was already rocked. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So in light of that, um, what does that mean for me and for the rest of the C3? Well, I feel, and this is one thing that, that the Lord had spoke to me, when I ran in to our bedroom and I began to share with him is that again as I read God is doing a new thing it's an mm -hmm. awakening that's mm -hmm. taking place that's as good. I search that word awakening one of the words on there that's used is unity mm -hmm. oh, that's and good. I feel that this is the time because we have gotten lazy we comply compromise you know mm -hmm. and God's Complacent. bringing us back mm -hmm to who we truly are yes and one of the other things he said to me gathering and awakening that's taking place that's right. so it's gathering everything the spoils everything that he's doing because he's 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 rebuilding that's cool. and the things that we used to do back then no more so we cannot go backward, guys. We have to go forward because good. it's new and fresh. Mm -hmm. And it's something. And one of the things I used to say that before God's mercy is new every morning. Mm -hmm. Well, I looked up the word mercy many years ago. And it said something extraordinary, something that hasn't happened yet. 
And I thought, such a time as this. Yes. yes. Yeah, it's hard, and we're grieving our loved ones because some are passing away, and things are happening. Yes, and that stuff, we feel the pain. Mm -hmm. But God is doing a new thing. Dang, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. That's so powerful. I just, what, to you, Pastor Juan, what did that, what would you want to share with everybody, what it meant to you? I, I again, I believe I, what it meant to me from just that, what he has shared, is the rescue. Mm -hmm. There's a rescue mm -hmm going on is mm -hmm. a rescue because when we think of of uh, of of the church we forget sometimes that there that there are people out there mm -hmm. that god is calling that they're supposed to be part mm -hmm. of the church of mm -hmm. the kingdom of god that he so there's a rescuing going on right now to sons and daughters that's good and all it's rescuing god is rescuing them and that's what he impressed upon my heart that there is a rescuing mm -hmm. going on right now we need to celebrate that we need to acknowledge that we need to decree and declare that because yes. it's happening amen. It amen. Is happening. Amen. And amen in that rescuing it's an awakening that yeah. takes place because when you go into and rescue that person mm -hmm. that individual yeah. of whatever it is that they going through that pain or yeah. whatever it is being captive it is an awakening because you reach out yeah. to them and pull them out that's right. and of it awakens their heart and going yeah. oh wait a minute i'm not going to be captive anymore yeah to that. right. that's good freedom mm -hmm. it's freedom Amen. that's Amen. so good and also when you shared with me pastor juan what i i wrapped my heart around the brain was that you said now's the time mm -hmm. now's the time yeah. so in light of that i would like for everybody at home everybody receive this word as a word from god because when we receive a word from god it brings healing we are healed yeah. and then our deliverance comes Amen. so let Amen. this be a word for you to be able to say god i receive this word be healed. Amen. So now I would, and, and let him fight our battles for us. Mm -hmm. So now I would like for everybody to raise your hands. And would you, I would love for you guys to pray over everybody right now right. that they would receive what God has for them in this new place, in this new awakening, in this going forward in such a powerful experiential way. Okay. <clears throat> I want to pray Nehemiah on everyone says, when you hear the blast of the trumpet, rush to wherever it is sounding. So, Father, right now I declare, Lord God, for hearing ears to yes. hear clearly yes. and correctly, Lord yes. God, and yes. what you want them to hear, Lord. And I pray for courage and boldness to run towards it, Lord. And when they run towards it, Father, you say in your word, then you will come and you will fight for us, Lord. Yes. And I thank you that you said that the battle has been won. So, Father, I thank you that this battle has been won, Father. It is yours anyway, Lord God. So I ask you, thank Lord you. God, that your hand will be upon your people, Father, that you will bless them and bless them indeed. Yes. Expand their borders and territory, Lord God. Yes. And I thank you that at this time, Father, I know it seems like we have lost loved ones. We have lost things, but the truth is that we have not lost anything father you will provide for your sons and your daughters lord god that's that's who you are and you will take care of us yes, and i declare the year of jubilee over your sons and yes, daughters yes, father yes, we lord. give you glory and we give you honor in jesus name Amen. and father god we just decree and declare the sons and daughters father god family may, uh, uh, members Father God, uh, neighbors, Father God, all around, Father God, even now, all around the world, that we decree and declare that they are coming in, Father God, Amen. that they are coming into, into a, a, a relationship with you, Lord Jesus. We, we decree and declare, Father God, that they are hearing the sound of the trumpet yes. being sounded right now in the name of Jesus. Thank and you, I agree Lord. again with my, with my wife and with, the, with Pastor Kathleen and with the rest, Lord God, that they have hearing ears to hear yes. what the Spirit of God, what you are doing right now, and what you are sounding from heaven, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, that even now we decree and declare that there is a great response yes. of thousands Revival. upon thousands upon thousands, thank Lord you, God, Lord. responding to the yes. sound of your trumpet yes, in Jesus' Father. name. Thank you for an Amen. awakening, Lord. In Amen. the name Amen. of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I would like to just invite anybody 
that doesn't know Jesus Christ, that doesn't know that it, actually this relationship is Hallelujah. about the Spirit. And you must be born again in order to be a part of this covenant, to be a part of the family of God as sons and daughters of God, to be able to experience his love and his power and experience true deliverance and healing and, and begin to flourish. He wants to take what has been taken away from you and turn it around and begin to have yes. you prosper and flourish in your life. Yes. This is about a following of Jesus Christ. So I would like to invite anybody that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, or maybe you haven't been living for God and you want to rededicate your life to Christ, yes, we invite yes. you to actually online, you can fill out a form right there on c3cottonwood.org, and we would like to connect with you, we would like to pray with yes. you, and we would like to disciple you in how to be a follower of Jesus Christ. So right now, I'd like to pray with those people. Father God, I just give my heart over to you. I repent of my sins and all the destruction that I have chosen to live my own way. I give my life. I dedicate myself to you. And I ask that you come live inside of me. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, and we love you. And you guys have an incredible, powerful week this week. Be expectant of what God is and going to do in your life.